Hey, so good morning. We're going to start the briefing uh, in about one minute. Uh, so this is a test. Hope everybody can hear. If you can hear us, um, uh, just let us know. Okay, we're going to go ahead and begin. This is the 11.30 a.m. Um, briefing for Hurricane Florence. Uh, welcome. We actually have a host of people um, going to be doing the briefing today. I'm Brandon Locklear, uh, one of the forecast here, forecasters here at the Weather Service in Raleigh. Um, if you've been paying attention, uh, you've seen what we've seen. There's been a pretty significant shift in the forecast track. We have seen a, a more southern um, forecast track. Um, and, and that's going to result in some in, in, in a big change in the forecast. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, there's still over the next 48 to 72 hours, we could still see that forecast track fluctuate. Remember that as you get, you know, two days out, you're still looking at an 80 mile, you know, track error. That's that's historically uh, in the forecast track. So we're going to continue to monitor that track closely. Um, right now, given that farther southern track, that may limit impacts across northern portions of central North Carolina. So getting to the greatest impacts, you know, you know, even with that said, we're still expecting a very extreme flash flood and threat well inland uh, associated with Florence. Um, the timing may be a little bit slower, um, but Basically, across the sand hills, across the coastal plain, uh, that threat still exists. Um, and because of that, really, and we'll show you some of the expected rainfall amounts in some upcoming slides, because of that very heavy rainfall, uh, that could result in some very significant and extreme river flooding as well. Uh, winds, again, uh, based on the latest track, we're looking at that southern, that, that southeastern portions. Uh, of our area around Sampson, Wayne, Cumberland, uh, certainly Hoke in Scotland are in those areas too, uh, that you could see significant winds. Um, you take the combination of those uh, very wet soils and you take those strong winds we're expecting, we're expecting to see some significant impacts, numerous and potentially prolonged power outages. Uh, eastern portions uh, remain a threat to see some also uh, relatively weak and short-lived tornadoes as well um, and I already uh, keyed in on the power outages. So looking at the main points again and paying particularly close attention to the timing, uh, we're a little bit slower time, we're still expecting that areas Basically, across eastern and southeastern portions of our CWA, uh, we're looking to start seeing winds start to pick up uh, during the Thursday afternoon hours, um, but probably seeing the, the, the highest and strongest winds during the day on Friday. Um, rain bands and, and, a, and a threat of heavy rain will occur well ahead of the wind as we start getting those outer bands starting to move inland um, as early as, as possibly even before Thursday afternoon. Um, and with that forecast and, and the forecast for Florence to basically, uh, as it starts to approach our coasts, uh, stall out potentially for a day, a day and a half, uh, you know, those threat, those areas could see multiple days of heavy rainfall, very reminiscent, reminiscent of, of, of Harvey for Texas. Um, and again, that could begin Thursday. And right now we're saying that could last through the weekend. Um, interesting enough. Um, some of the latest models are showing that by the early part to middle part of next week, the circulation of Florence could move up the spine of the Appalachians. So we could see a heavy rain threat along the mountains and foothills in the western part of the state um, during the early to mid part of next week. So, you know, we're looking at a very long duration here, folks. Um, and, that, and that river flooding will continue. Uh, as, as we get the rains and they run off into our rivers, we're looking at that to continue into early next week, maybe even later. Um, already touched on the tornadoes and the power outages. Um, talking about the latest track, and, and you can see here, this is the, the latest 11 a.m. advisory. 
Um, you know, Florence is still a major hurricane in Category 4 at 130 miles an hour. It is now located about 485 miles southeast of Wilmington, and it's moving west-northwest at about 15 miles an hour with a pressure of 943 millibars. Uh, notice that they have it a major hurricane uh, as it approaches the North Carolina coast, and I want you to pay close attention that um, of, of these two points. So if you go to that 8 a.m. Saturday point and you look at that 8 a.m. Friday point, that doesn't move a whole lot. Uh, that, that's going to be sitting there, and as it's sitting there, it's going to be producing the heavy rain. It's going to be producing the heavy uh, wind um, across our southeastern portions. Uh, that is that's going to be a long duration, a very long duration. So the key messages, you know, it, we're still expecting um, along the coast a very life-threatening storm surge, a lot of coastal erosion as, as a storm just sits there potentially for a day, day and a half sitting there spinning. Uh, as, you get in, as you get inland and even along the coast, we're expecting catastrophic flood, flash flooding, life-threatening flooding um, coming into our sand hills and southern coastal plain. Um, already talked about the winds, um, and I'll show you some, some additional graphics of, of some expected uh, wind impacts. Um, but if you look in the lower right, you're seeing the earliest reasonable arrival time of the tropical storm force winds. So you're seeing that right now, that's that Thursday around 8 a.m., but given the potential for that storm to sit there and, and stall out, you know, that could be later. Um, so there's, 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 there's definitely some uncertainty there when talking about how, you know, when we're going to see the arrival of the stronger winds. Uh, looking at the tropical storm force wind probabilities, people living uh, inland, well inland, and across like the, the triangle area, yeah, we have seen those probabilities decrease some, but it's still too early to, come, to let your guard down. Uh, we could easily see over the next... Uh, 24 to 36 hours, we could continue to see adjustments in that track. Uh, but note, note that we still see, I mean, anywhere from 70 to 90 percent um, probability of tropical storm force winds uh, for basically uh, US 1 east and southeast. We already touched on the uh, earliest reasonable arrival time. Um, and go back there real quick. Again, got to make that point that given the potential for that system to slow down, th th this could change. It could be a little later. So we introduced these uh, uh, graphics to you yesterday, and this is really to make things, um, you know, for people not to focus on the wind magnitudes. Let's, let's focus on the impacts because that's, that's what causes the trouble. It's going to be the impacts. Uh, given the latest track, we still expect to have a high impacts uh, across that southeast corner. So Scotland, Hoke, Cumberland, Harnett, Johnston, Wayne, Sampson, you know, you guys right now we're expecting to see the, the strongest and most damaging and potential destructive winds across your counties. Um, and we still have a very moderate threat uh, extending all the way well into our central Piedmont, northern Piedmont. Uh, expect and prepare for widespread and prolonged power outages. That's the message. That's what we need to prepare for. This is a storm to over-prepare for because the risk is just too great if you don't. Um, now getting to our seven-day uh, rainfall forecast. Here, here's a threat, folks, and we're looking at 15 to 20 inches uh, in that southeast corner. Um, this is very close to what we saw with Matthew, and it's still fresh in our minds, so we know what kind of impacts to expect from 15 to 20 inches of rainfall um, during maybe a two, three, four-day period. And it's possible that these amounts could go up um, as we get closer to the event. So you know you're so you're talking about receiving six, maybe eight months rainfall in a two or three day period. So we're you know we we're expecting very catastrophic flooding across this area, and um, we're going to have some other forecasters giving you some additional information in in a few slides. 
about what you know what kind of impacts can we expect from our rivers from this this amount of rain rainfall um, and that's why we're seeing we're seeing a potential for extreme flood in those counties and again this this extreme and this major flooding it, it, it may end up shifting further inland but right now this is where basically we think the, the greatest threat kind of in that i-94 i-95 corridor Um, tropical tornado threat, yeah, it's there. Uh, typically very short-lived tornadoes as they spin up real quickly and they spin down. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's more of a minor impact, but definitely uh, as, 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 the, as those brain bands move onshore, um, that, that's where you have the best potential to see some very short-lived and weak tornadoes. There's folks in a little bit more. Um, again, we may see that area shift further, further east as we get closer, because you know we're still a day and a half, to two days away. Okay, now we're getting to some of the the river forecast, and I'm gonna pass this along to uh, uh, Kathleen. All right, thanks, Brandon. Um, I don't want anybody to get confused or, or uh, mix up the messaging here on these plots that I'm going to show you. But what I wanted to show you is the degree of, A, uncertainty in the forecast, which is shown here by the spread between all of these little lines on here. These are different, um, what we call ensemble runs of the GFS model. And so it's just a small change in, in any of the baseline parameters um, and how that will evolve within the model. So you can see there's a very large spread um, between the, the ensemble that produces the most rainfall and the ensemble that produces the least amount of rainfall. Um, this shaded orange area is the more likely range of rainfall that we are expecting in this point in particular is for um, the Cape Fear River at Fayetteville. And so the most likely range of rainfall is expected to be in the five to eight inches range. But if you look at this model simulation, there are some ensemble members that are up over 10 inches. And so um, what that would translate to in the river stage for that point is shown on this slide. And you can see that there are some members that would take the Cape Fear River at Fayetteville up into major flooding, which is 58 feet. Um, however, there are some model runs that keep it well below flood stage, um, 15 to 20 feet. Um, you will see a rise on this river regardless of the amount of um, rainfall you get because we are expecting at least 5 to 10 inches. And so that will show a rise in the river regardless. Um, so the message here is that while we are expecting um, the, the rainfall to produce a rise, it's you want to prepare for the worst case scenario, um, even if that may not happen, just because the, like Brandon said, the, the impacts are just too great to not take that, that into consideration. And for a perspective here, I wanted to show um, a site that was farther to the west. And so this is on the Yadkin River at Yadkin College, which is um, on the, board, the western edge of Forsyth County. And so uh, you can see here that the rainfall amounts that the models are projecting aren't quite as high. You can see on the side there, um, anywhere from three to eight inches. Um, and again, the spread between those ensemble members is very great. And so that is a limited um, amount of confidence or a high degree of uncertainty with respect to how much rainfall we're actually seeing. Um, the most likely range there is, again, between three to six inches, um, and what that would translate to along the river is a rise like so. So you do have some, some of the ensemble members would take this into minor flooding. However, there are still several that would not flood this forecast point at all. So um, remember, just the, the key message here that we want to reiterate is, is don't let your guard down. We know that for the northern sites and the western sites, the models may be trending down a little bit. However, we we are still expecting upwards of three to six to, if not 
five to 10 inches of rainfall, which will result in rises on the rivers. Um, and small changes in this forecast track or the amount of time that it stays stationary over one point will have a big impact. So I'm gonna transition back to Brandon here um, and, and let him finish up this, this briefing. Okay, thanks Kathleen. Um, so the event summary, I, I think everybody's understanding, you know, what we're dealing with here. Um, I would say confidence is, you know, you know, there's still, there's still a lot of uncertainty here. You know, I know a lot of you are maybe sitting there, oh my gosh, you know, we're, 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 we're two days out. But um, as, as you can tell with the changes in the forecast track, um, you know, it's, there's still some uncertainty here. So confidence is moderate. We know there's going to be great impacts around the Carolinas. Um, if that's going to be focused uh, along that southern tier uh, near, the, near the South Carolina state line, or is it going to be a little bit farther north? It's going to be somewhere we just have not, not able to narrow that down yet. Uh, so you should prepare. You should prepare for the, for, for the strong winds uh, beginning um, mostly probably on Friday and persisting into the weekend. Um, Heavy rain threat could occur a little before the winds start, uh, particularly if that system this size is just sit right off our coast a little bit longer, some of the guidance suggests. Um, but uh, right now we're thinking Thursday evening and persisting possibly um, through the weekend into early next week. Um, three key points. Sorry about that, let me go back. Uh, even with the, the change in the, in, in the track, uh, we still expect a pro prolonged and life-threatening rain inland um, across, you know, eastern and, and southeastern portions of our area. Um, we still expect dangerous winds. Um, wind gusts right now, I think in our forecast, deterministic forecast, we're looking at wind gusts possible of between 50 and 60 mile per hour winds along that southeast corridor of Sampson and Wayne and, and Cumberland. Uh, so basically you're talking about severe thunderstorm um, wind speeds. The ones that we typically see bring trees down during our severe thunderstorms, that's what we're forecasting for wind gusts as that circulation center moves in. Okay. Um, and and as, as we've been saying all week, you know, uh, you're getting close to the point where, you know, your preparation should already be in place. Um, and, and we hope everyone has, has listened and, and made those preparations. Um, our next briefing will be at 5.30 p.m. Um, and now we're gonna open up um, for any questions that we may have. And let me say one more thing, is that uh, all you guys, most of you should have our telephone numbers. Call us. You got any questions? Any you? Every county may have a unique situation. We like to call that a critical uh, decision point that they may need to have a little bit more detailed information. Don't be afraid to call us. Uh, we're, we're here 24 hours a day.